ಶ್ರೀಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಮೂಕಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಾನಂದಮಾಧವ ಸದಾಶಿವಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾದ್ರಂಕರ್ಣೇಭಿಶೃಣು ಯಾದೇವಾ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇಮಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈಸ್ತುಷ್ಟು ವಾಗುಂಸನು ವ್ಯಶೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತೈಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಶ್ರವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾರ್ಕ್ಷೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದಾತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 after indicating the lineage the glorious parampara of this upanishadic knowledge starting from the lord brahma himself coming down up to rishi angiras and to this rishi angiras a great prosperous householder shaunaka approached with the required humility as guided by the scriptures and requested for the knowledge of that one knowing which everything gets known this also indicates how much the student already had some understanding he had some keen observations he also had heard was in satsang so all this is indicated through this question and when he asked this question what is that one knowing which all this gets known that also is indicated that he is aware kind of that all this to know all this there has to be something which is not this and if it is not this the other is i so in other words this question indicates who am i i want to know myself and please instruct me on that as soon as the student clearly put his question the teacher without any delay immediately starts his discourse and it is not a direct indicative answer where you asked for what is it and then you say it is your own self matter over no because when we say my own self there may be so many misconceptions misunderstandings misinterpretations so i need to first be clear about what i am not what this knowledge is not then i will be able to reach what this knowledge is and be able to benefit out of it so here when the teacher 
indicates he says there are two types of knowledge one has to know the lower and the higher the para apara vidya so this lower and higher knowledge is enumerated and first he says that now apara vidya i will first tell you what it is and when he enlists we find that all the scriptures fall under apara vidya lower knowledge rigveda yajurveda ityadi and all the vedangas so everything falls under apara vidya so does that mean all this is not indicating the supreme it is indicating the supreme it is the means to the supreme knowledge but when we talk of the words the meanings that is not the higher knowledge that is not para vidya it is apara only it is lower only so this uh, higher knowledge is defined very beautifully as yaya tad aksharam adhigamyate that by which the imperishable is known or is attained or is reached adhigamyate has all the meanings so knowing brahman as pooja gurudev very beautifully puts it knowing the self is being the self so adhigamyate means not just intellectually understanding but experientially knowing it knowing it as my own inner self yaya tad aksharam adhigamyate that akshara brahma is known that which is imperishable is known now suddenly you were, i asked what is it knowing which all this is uh known and then you said there are two knowledges and then you said the higher knowledge is that which uh the higher knowledge is that by which the imperishable is known now if we see how the knowledge is slow, small building blocks of knowledge now the question itself indicated that the student wants to know about the self kasmin no bhago vijnate sarvam idam vijnatam bhavati all this is known so if it is not this then it has to be i so i want to know i now what is the nature of i so in the answer of what is the higher knowledge para vidya it is indicated para vidya is that by which the imperishable akshara is known now what is that imperishable it has to be the i so already the indications have started that this it is the i which is of the nature of never perishing reality and that imperishable through which it is known is called higher knowledge that is para vidya so all these words all these meanings the verses the mantras all that we read study listen to what is all that it is apara vidya and when we say lower does not mean it is in any way unimportant or unnecessary no when we say apara vidya and when such a list is given which is all the vedas etc what it means is studying these mantras the words the meanings are a stepping stone to realize that realizing that self so we have to understand that studying this knowing the meanings is not the end it is the means it is a sadhana not the sadhya not the goal the goal is to know that imperishable self as my own self that is that that experiential knowledge is the ultimate and that is why it is called it is classified only separately that is para vidya yaya tad aksharam adhigamyate now how can i know now there may be so many you know it is only with grace of guru that it can be known yes that is also true uh, no doubt a long time of study and contemplation only it can be known yes agreed 
you should be blessed to know it yes that also agreed but all these things what we are talking about are means that because of which the imperishable self is known is different from all these means what can trigger that knowledge we don't know anything can trigger that knowledge at any moment that knowledge can happen while we are studying the veda knowledge can happen while following the veda i am worshiping the lord with a particular form and i am doing the worship the puja and at that time this can happen when i am serving my guru at one moment it can happen when i am just sitting peacefully cheerfully just watching nature just being there that time it can happen any moment this can happen so it need not be that i should have the books in my hand i should be in my study table or i should be you know sitting in front of the altar and that time is when this knowledge will dawn not necessary yaya tadaksharam adhigamyate any time this can happen but the higher knowledge is available only when we have familiarity with the lower knowledge <laughs> the lower rungs of ladder is important so only when we study we contemplate that is important but the higher knowledge can happen we may be studying for years together still we may be far from the higher knowledge possible and someone with pure mind extreme faith clarity of thought purity of mind such a person just one or two words of the upanishad done over possible so we cannot that is why it is classified separately yaya tadaksharam adhigamyate now tad aksharam what is that aksharam what is that imperishable self we are talking about what is its nature how do i know and if it is my own self now the most confusing word in the scriptures is me i because everything else we can understand is so a brahman is sachidananda swarupa understood there is a you are brahman you what is that you that is difficult to understand you have to understand you yourself are brahman oh i am brahman now what is this i at the moment i am living as the body so the meaning of i is wrong so whatever i may be reading the great declarations of the upanishad saying i am brahman but the word i only is not correct in my understanding so everything else as a third person i can understand but when it comes to me my identity i am not able to right now understand so i need to know some more information is required what is that aksharam what is that imperishable self so here this mantra very beautifully uh, is being the self is being indicated as uh, pooja gurudev says that self cannot be defined because the self defined is the self defiled god defined is god defiled so it can only be indicated because it is something beyond words beyond definitions so some words can indicate and when we come across these indicators these pointers we need to understand the pointer is not the self the pointed is the self but the self is that which can never be pointed so the pointer is not the self what the pointer is pointing at is the self but the self by itself is cannot be pointed 
using any word because the words are very small with respect to what it is and gurudev gives this very beautiful example you now we have when we go on roads highways etc there are those milestones so it is at this place you go in this direction for so much distance you will reach this place so it's a milestone so it what is it indicating this direction this much distance and you will reach the destination the name of the destination also is given now the thing is that milestone is not my destination the name written on the milestone also is not my destination the direction the distance the travel also is not my destination then what is my destination the destination is that which is indicated by this milestone where i am asked to move in a direction and for so much distance i will reach there that is the destination oh so then this indication is it my destination no the indicator no it cannot be indicated in a small board because the destination is much bigger than the small little board so similarly these words are pointers pointing at the self which can never be pointed and they are helping us so what is to be done we have to take help of the pointer and like the milestone guides us we move in that direction and we reach there eventually now very interestingly what is the okay direction understood what is the distance we are interested that how much should i travel so that i reach the beauty here is direction is indicated through those words and the distance is 0 kilometers 0 So then, what is the travel? Yes, there is no need. <laughs> there is no need. Oh, then I am already realized. No. <laughs> oh, so I need to know. Yes. So I need to take the journey. Yes. How long? Zero. So for this, another very beautiful example you heard is this uh, party. so few friends got together nicely got drunk early in the morning parties get over that time so early in the morning they all decided to disperse and the party was in one of the friends homes and all others had come so they all started leaving so when they all were leaving the host he was the most drunk so he said where are you all going take me also drop me i also want to go home so these friends who were a little sober compared to him they said you are already at your home only what are you talking you are already you all are going no 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 i also have to go home i want to reach home also so please take me please take me he didn't let them leave without him so they understood he is too drunk to understand anything put him in the car said okay come they took three pradakshinas of their his own house three rounds of his own house and then came back to the entrance again same place they came back and opened the door of the car and said here is your home thank god you were leaving me there and going away thank you for dropping me home now i feel good i have reached home thank you goes in back in where he came from this is exactly our journey and this is how the upanishad is going to take around to take us around and the starting point and the ending point is the same 
when what is this journey all about so many mantras what is this mantras all about pradakshina three rounds around <laughs> our own self and then coming back to the same point and saying here is your destination you have reached ah i have reached yes i now i understand so this is the journey so now what is this imperishable brahman the self <coughs> So the sixth mantra indicates <coughs> yat tat adreshyam agrahyam agotram avarnam achakshushrotram tadapani padam nityam vibhum सर्वगतम सुसूक्ष्मम तदव्ययम यद्भूत योनिम परिपश्यन्ति धीराः दैट यया तद अक्षरम अधिगम्यते व्हाट इज दैट अक्षरम सो हियर इज सेइंग यत तद what is that aksharam that i'll tell you that is adreshyam adreshyam adrishyam it cannot be seen unseeable you can't see it at all no so now what does unseeable adreshyam negate eliminate anything that can be seen is eliminated anything now when we say it cannot be seen uh, bhagwan shankaracharya ji explains gurudev also has explained we have to understand all the senses the sense organs cannot perceive it <coughs> so by this what has been eliminated is all that is perceivable by the senses in past present and future everything is eliminated that is not the self that is not the imperishable reality adrishya so now if people who demand that i don't believe in god you show me god only then i will believe now that demand itself is incorrect because if i can show you then it is not god because that which is seen is not the self god we are saying in the language of devotion the language of knowledge or philosophy we say it is truth or it is the self so the self is something that cannot be seen it cannot be the object of my senses so that which can be seen heard tasted touched smelled that is not the self <coughs> that is why when we when we chant tapo and shatkam ashabdam sparsham roopam whatever all these objects of senses it is not that okay then agrahyam that which cannot be grasped ungraspable now grasping generally is i hold something with the hand and hand is an organ of action the five senses and their objects are eliminated by the the five the objects of the five senses are eliminated by just saying adrishyam similarly the objects of the five the actions of the five organs of action that is the speech the hand leg the genitals the uh, anus all these are organs of action the objects of organs of action it cannot be grasped it cannot be spoken about it cannot be reached to so it cannot be attained by any action also <coughs> agrahyam ungraspable okay then when he saying 
agotram agotram means gotra means origin <coughs> that is why in our you no know, when we take the sankalpa etc or when we traditionally uh, offer our prostrations we always mention our gotra in pujas etc also gotra is mentioned gotra means which lineage what is my origin is believed that all of us are connected to some of the other rishi so that lineage we belong to and if some people don't know what is their lineage they say kashyapa right well, kashyapa prajapati he was so we say kashyapa gotra the so, origin origin is indicated here a gotra means the one without any origin there is no origin for that self no starting point no cause acha a gotram a varnam varnam varna word is used for color but color also is a description so varnan varnanam so varna means that which is an i describe something using varna so when i introduce somebody so i say this these are this person's very good qualities when i introduce myself also i think about myself also so i say these are my strengths but there are certain weaknesses also i have so i varna na so these are attributes guna so a varna means that which has no attributes with which it can be dis- described that is why description is not possible only indication is possible so here it is said cannot be spoken of it cannot be described and yet we find this entire upanishad talking only about it this is the compassion of the rishis sometimes we take it for granted but the rishis have done the impossible just to ensure that we get this knowledge they already had got why should they do anything why should they speak about it they spoke about that which cannot be spoken about so that we eventually come to know that it is my own self so that avarnam cannot be spoken about because there is no attribute to it the nirguna avarnam a chakshu shrotram no eyes no ears now again eyes ears this all belong to the category of the sense organs so earlier when it said ad- adreshyam which means that all the objects of the senses are eliminated when they say a chakshu shrotram means the sense organs also are eliminated because if it is not the objects of the senses oh then they are they the senses no that also is not so a chakshu shrotram okay then that a pani padam and it is not the hands not the legs a pani padam means it is not the organs of action also so it is not the field of action it is not the organ of action it is not the object of senses it is not the senses themselves also it is that which cannot be dis- described that which cannot be grasped that which doesn't have any origin was never created also in some upanishads this achakshu shrotram tad pani padam is in a very poetic way is described described indicated as that the self listens without ears sees without eyes grasps without hand walks without legs so it is none of the organs of action it is none of the action but without it nothing else is possible अचक्षु श्रोत्र तदपाणीपाद ओ 
So such a thing, how will we know? It is so difficult. And that time, Rishi Angira syndicated to uh, this Shaunaka. It was such an old thing. Is it still around? To be known is a Nityam. <laughs> it is eternal. Maybe, you know, uh, Angiras was indicating that self of Shaunaka, maybe. The so, Shaunaka self, he realized. What about myself? It is one only. Nityam, eternal. There is no change. Then, then why so many different, you no, know, all this variety, why is there in this world? Vibhum. Because that itself is manifested in all these forms. Vibhum, vividam bhavati. So, it is there in everything, means as everything. That alone is everything. <coughs> Vibhum. And what is its reach? Sarvagatam. It has reached everywhere. Nothing is out of its reach. In other Upanishads, it is beautifully said that the senses had a race, but the self was already at the finishing line waiting for them. And I am here. Oh, so the self ran faster. No, without even running, it had already finished the race. Beyond the finishing line. Means, Sarvagatam, it is everywhere. <laughs> but when these poetic ways of expression are used by the Rishis, sometimes we get confused. But this is what it means. That Sarvagatam, it is everywhere, nowhere, it is not. Sarvagatam. Which means, when we say Nityam, Vibhum, Sarvagatam, all these words when we read, it is such a great uh, you know, assurance for us that at any time, any place, it is available for anyone to experience. In any time period, any time zone, day or night, in young age or old age, in any part of the world, whatever, wherever, whoever may be, this is available. What a great thing. It is not that you have to go to this place at this time and in this condition only, only then you will get Nityam. Vibhum, Sarvagatam. So, this knowledge is available anytime, anywhere. This can happen. Sarvagatam. Then, why am I not able to find it? Why am I not able to experience? If it is everywhere, I should be able to experience. Why is it not experienceable? Because Susukshmam, subtler than the subtlest. Extremely subtle, Sukshma. The word Sukshma indicates also that it is pervasive. Sukshma indicates it cannot be an object of the senses. Sukshma also indicates it is internal, it is close to me. Saying close also is distant. It is internal. So, Sukshma word indicates all these. Susukshmam, extremely subtle. And that is the reason, even if it is available all the time as my own self, I am not able to see it. Susukshmam. It's very interesting if we let us do this exercise. What can we see? What are we able to see? 
Huh? Are we able to see the iPad? Hmm? Okay, it's covered. <laughs> okay, that's more specific. Okay, what what are we seeing? Forget about what it is and recognizing it. What are we able to see? There's a grey and there's a black border. Huh? A rectangle. Yes, good. So, all this is what we are seeing. But, something more basic. If there was no light, would we have seen any of this? So, are we not seeing light also? Is there light on this? It is reflected on this. So, there is light. But none of us seeing light, we are still not seeing light. We are seeing the grey colour and the rectangle shape and all these things. We are seeing all these things which is illumined by light. But light itself we are never seeing. But light is there everywhere without which I cannot see also. Now the self that we are talking about is that light because of which this light is seen. So that is called susukshmam, subtler than this also. And therefore, it is ever available for my experience, yet I am never able to experience it. Susukshma. <clears throat> it is so very subtle. So, subtle means this. So, it is closer to me. When we want to see uh, the reflection of our, our own self, our own face uh, in the mirror, where do we hold the mirror? It cannot be very close because I can't see it. If it is close to me, I cannot see the reflection. It has to be away. So, Sukshma means what? That which is close to me. So, it cannot be seen with the eyes. Adrashyam. So, all these words are actually defining each other and helping us to understand. Nityam, Vibhum, Sarvagatam, Susukshmam, Tad Avyayam. That alone is imperishable. That which never gets destroyed. That which never undergoes any change. Avyayam. So, it is eternal, it is manifested in all these various forms, it is everywhere, it is extremely subtle and it never perishes, never changes. There is no, oh that time self used to be like this, you know, nowadays the self is, you know, it has changed little bit. What to do with all this internet exflu uh, influence and all these things, you know. So, the self has kind of shrunk a little bit. Nowadays, self is not available 24-7. No, morning 5 minutes and evening 5 minutes it is available. You have to be, you should get up early in the morning, 5 o'clock. Sit and meditate. No, but no, I sleep so late. I have a night duty. What to do? Why? Self is available only at that time. After that, self is not available for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is not the case. Gurudev used to say that the best time of meditation is when one is fresh. So, he used to specifically has talked in one of the talks, he has said that when somebody is doing a night shift, then for that person, come back, have a good sleep and when you are up, and fresh, that's when it is that best time for meditation. So, it depends. But the point is, why such flexibility our rishis had? Why, you know, we say that to Gurudev, you know, he was not so much, you know, traditional and all, he was little modern and he was very pragmatic and all. It is not that. One who understands the scriptures correctly only will be like that, most practical. That it is available all the time. It is not only that Brahma Murtha 3.30 am only you should get up. Otherwise, you are you have missed the bus. 
Self, oh, self was here just now. Sorry. Now it is gone. Gone to the next country. I got into the time zone. <laughs> it's not so. So that is why it is. Avyayam doesn't change. Nityam always there. Sarvagatam everywhere. In all these forms. And that is why people have come to connect to this self, realize this self, abide in this self in varied situations. That does not mean we should not have discipline in our life and we say, oh, whenever I sleep, whenever I get up, it is okay. No, that does not mean. But the point is, it is not limited. It is ever available for us to experience. And they said, Yad Bhuta Yonim. And anything that is existing is called Bhuta. So, whatever is existing, all the creation, the very cause of this creation, Yoni means cause. The cause of Everything that is experienced by us is that. Now see, such complete knowledge. What was the question? Knowing which everything, all this gets known. It's there, all this is important. So it indicates it is me, self. Okay. Secondly, Knowing one thing, everything gets known. What are the examples in our observation? That the cause once known, that is the gold once known, all golden ornaments are known. All clay known, then all clay pots are known. So, when the cause is known, all the effects are known at once. And that is the self. Now, what is it said? Yad bhuta yonim. It is the very cause of all this that is manifested and vibhum that itself is manifesting in all these forms which means what it is the cause and that cause is that which knowing which everything else gets known now who is the cause where is the cause if we say, of course, Vibhum indicates very clearly that the creation itself is the cause in different form. But when the first mantra, Brahma Devanam Pratamasam Bhavuva Vishwasya Karta, who is the cause, who is the creator, that Brahma. Who is Brahma? Brahman plus Maya. So Brahman. Endowed with Maya Shakti, who is, we uh, indicate with reference to the power of creation, is called Brahma, Brahmaji, Ishwara, and he is the cause. So now, if we just, these many mantras, if we take them together, then what does it mean? The question is, I want to know the self, which is the cause of the universe. In the previous mantra, the first mantra it was indicated that Ishwara is the cause of the universe. Here it is being indicated this self is the cause of the whole creation. Do you mean to say I am Ishwara? <laughs> there may be a question like that. I am, I am Ishwara? Here the problem is where the definition of the word I. It is not Ishwara. It is I. The understanding of I is where the confusion is there. Because immediately we start thinking about having power, action of creation, all these things. Because this is what we are familiar with today. So we are not able to conceive of that reality which is beyond action. Beyond all this power and its manifestations. And that is what is indicated here. 
അദ്രേഷ്യം ആ ഗ്രാഹ്യം ആ ഗോത്രം ആ വർണം ആ ചക്ഷുശ്രോത്രം ആ പാണിപാദം നിത്യം വിഭും സർവഗതം സുസൂക്ഷ്മം അവ്യയം ഭൂതയോനിം നോ ആക്ഷൻ ഓൾസോ നോ നോ ഓർഗൻസ് ഓഫ് ആക്ഷൻ ഓൾസോ നോ നോ പെർസെപ്ഷൻ ഓൾസോ നോ നോ ഓർഗൻസ് ഓഫ് പെർസെപ്ഷൻ നോ കെനോട്ട് ബി thought of by the intellect no cannot be grasped that way also oh this is very subtle yes yet eternal yes it is all the time available yes but still i can't experience it yes too difficult i think this is not possible to experience i give up put the book down enough thank god you told in the beginning itself this is what you are indicating is something impossible to be known the guru knows our capacity <laughs> so immediately he says pari pashyanti dhiraha he says there are great men of knowledge who are experiencing it now who experience it paripashyanti nicely very well in all different ways they are pashyanti pashyanti word as such means seeing but here what we need to understand is seeing already that is eliminated it cannot be seen so what it means is paripashyanti means are experiencing this truth this self so all these dhiraha who is a dhira so also indicating who can get this knowledge also in the first verse we saw atharvaya jeshta putraya praha so that was indicator of who is a qualified student little bit of indication was here here again dhiraha this is also indicating a qualified student who can actually experience and realize this self <coughs> dhira means in general we find bhagwan shankara charya ji uh, defines it as one who is endowed with discrimination clarity of thought the one who has clear discrimination dhira means viveki so dhiraha a person of discrimination but dhira also has many other meanings the one who has extreme patience is also called dhira dhira purusha patience now when we talk of patience patience is there in you know others having patience in others or that is one part of it but we become very very impatient with ourselves so as soon as we read yatta dadresham agrahyam agotram i am not getting it but how much did you try huh? i tried for 2 seconds it is not happening only the wrong practice is continuing since lifetimes together and 2 seconds i want some transformation in me i am not able to see uh, yes you can't see because it is said it cannot be seen <laughs> i am not saying that i am not able to experience yes but don't be patient please uh, have patience and sometimes this impatience towards oneself is also expressed towards the guru what you are saying all these words it is impossible it is impractical what are you talking about you, we get angry with the guru what is it? we get angry with the scripture what kind of description is this was well, the scripture saying i never said i am describing i am only indicating so having immense patience with everything external but most importantly also being patient with oneself that is also dhira also dhira is a one with lot of courage what kind of courage shri vidyaranya swami very beautifully defines this dhira he says when you have all the sense pleasures available for you to enjoy and indulge in and nobody to stop you from that indulgence 
even then one who does not feel any attraction towards those objects is called a dhira so all pleasures are available there is no obstruction to enjoy yet i don't feel the urge to enjoy only i am fulfilled in myself it is not even no we say there is so much of distraction around there is no distraction this doesn't serve as a distraction at all i am not attracted to it it is there but yeah let it be there doesn't matter i won't even run away from it because i have to run away if i feel attracted to it i don't run away because it is there i let it be there it is not disturbing me that is called dhira so such a person who has mastered his own senses his own mind so when we see these words slowly slowly are indicating different aspects of the fourfold qualifications so earlier atharvaya so atharva it was indicating shraddha faith here dhira is indicating viveka dhira is indicating vairagya dhira is indicating shamadama all these qualities are indicated and when one or two are indicated means we have to understand all the others dhira also indicates titiksha forbearance and there may be little bit of pin pricks in life it's okay doesn't matter i am patient i am just pursuing my knowledge so dhira paripashanti and such dhira can see are seeing are experiencing this self which is beyond experience so which means and it is plural dhiraha paripashyanti these words are plural when anything is indicated in plural in the self in the scriptures it means that it can be attained by anybody and everybody sometimes singular is at, uh, used when singular is used there is an understanding or a connotation saying that it is very rare very difficult but when it is used in plural it is available for everyone so as though the guru is telling us that it is available for you also you can also see you can also experience not to worry this may seem to be very difficult it may seem to be impossible but such unseeable ungraspable Uh, unoriginated uh, attributeless devoid of all sense organs and all organs of action that eternal uh, manifesting in different forms reaching everywhere extremely subtle unchanging cause of this universe can be experienced by anybody who is ready to become a dhira so qualification also is given so you just fulfill this it is available in fact i am seeing it now what am i seeing right now whatever we are seeing whatever we are hearing whatever we are experiencing what is it is there anything other than that reality there is nothing else if i am moving my hand what am i touching is that brahman only i can't say do not hear every sarvagatam susukshma still being in it i am not able to experience it but no need to worry it's just this qualification these qualities get more and more mature in us develop in us i will be able to see like the great persons who are seeing it who are experiencing it totally that's a very uh, famous one song says there is a fish in the waters which is itself thirsty looking for waters where can i quench my thirst swimming in the waters so that is our condition 
We are inside out Brahman. Still, I want this knowledge. I don't know how to understand Adresham, Agrahyam, etc. etc. Now, after this indication of the self using all these pointers, uh, these pointers again, Puja Gurudev used to always insist that whenever we come across these pointers, like these are so many words have come in this one verse Adresham, Agrahyam, Agotram, Avaram, so many of them, Nityam, Sarvagatam, So Sukshmam, etc. All these are aids to meditation. So, whenever we want to practice meditation, attempt meditation, sit down with eyes closed, how do we direct the mind? Where do we take it? So, one of these words we pick up and whatever it eliminates, take the mind away from it. What remains will be the self. It is not directing to some spatial place. That no, spatially I direct that you go this way and there you sit down. That cannot happen. Because sometimes that is what we are familiar with. But anything drishya is gone because it is said adrishya. Everything drishya is gone, everything that is seen is gone. So then what is. So even my thoughts, now thoughts are also seen. So that cannot be the self. And what is it? That which is beyond each thought. That which is seeing all the thoughts. That's where I have to lead my mind to. That is what is practice of meditation. So with every agrahyam, anything that can be grasped, it is not. Anything that originated, it is not agotram. So, in this manner, I lead my mind. You will see all these, every word is potent to lead us to that higher knowledge. Yaya tadaksharam adhigamyate. Every word and these verses Puja Gurudev used to really stress upon that these are the important verses. These are the verses that will guide our mind lead our mind to the right place where the mind itself dissolves and the self alone remains. So that's what we have to, so this is a very, very potent verse. So it is not the word and the meaning. See, now we are seeing the reality of the previous mantras. When the Guru says there are two types of knowledge, this is all the words and the meanings are all lower knowledge, apara vidya, but that which connects us and gets us you know, to reach or to abide in that self is the higher knowledge. Here itself we are understanding adresham word, that which can never be seen, meaning. This is not the higher knowledge. But when I lead my mind based on this word, and go beyond this word, that is when I come to the higher knowledge where I can hope to get a glimpse of that self. So, every word in this mantra has to be utilized in our sadhana. Now, after indicating this, now the Guru now the time has come when the Guru feels that you have to go out, take rounds and then come back. So now a beautiful journey begins. What is the journey? The journey of creation. Because the last line of the previous mantra said, Yad bhuta yonim paripashyanti bhiraha. The great men of knowledge have seen or are experiencing this self 
as the very cause of this universe. So what, how is this the cause? How did the creation happen? So very beautiful journey of the creation. And this is the style adopted by the scriptures. The whole creation is described and then we are also taught to trace back the steps to where we began from and then it is indicated that you are. So this is what is a step in Sanskrit it is called as Adhyaropa Apavada. So the superimposition is made to bring us to what we are familiar with and then trace back steps apavada to bring us to what we want to reach. So this is a very beautiful journey. So we will take that up tomorrow is creation day. <coughs> Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachati Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om